Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. You know, when Wild Kingdom debuted in the early 1960s, handling and training animals for form were common in many zoos. But today, animals like this African porcupine serve as wildlife ambassadors to educate rather than just entertain. These ambassadors have been hurt in the wild and would not survive without human interaction. So trained professionals bottle feed and foster the animals back to health, and the animals become imprinted on their human caregivers. Wild Kingdom showed generations of people the majesty of our animal ambassadors and helped us to care about them. When you care about something, you become committed to saving it. And that's how we all succeed in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha. Pretty good, W.K., pretty good. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. The highest mountain in Africa is Mount Kilimanjaro. This was the site of our adventure in the land of the proud Maasai people who live in the open plains at the mountain's base. The Maasai, with their herds of cattle, are now moving on the vast Amboseli game reserve beneath Kilimanjaro where the elephants, zebras, and other wild animals make their home. Jim and I joined the United Nations team in a range development project to determine how the Maasai cattle and the animals of Amboseli can best coexist on the same land. Hey, W.K., you know that's no toy now. In fact, this is exactly what it looks like. It's a gun. But it's not the usual kind of weapon. Sit back, W.K. Go get it. This gun shoots darts, not bullets. The dart carries a powerful drug that temporarily immobilizes the target animal. With this system, the United Nations team can safely approach some of the wild animals of Amboseli and mark them to study their travels and feeding habits. Our adventure began beneath Kilimanjaro, here in Kenya where we moved on to the plains of Amboseli. The reserve is full of wild animals, and you see many of them as you drive along. We're riding with Dick Denning, wildlife biologist in charge of the animal tagging project. Just ahead is one of Africa's great sites, Mount Kilimanjaro. Stretching beneath it is Amboseli. Here in this beautiful sanctuary, the remnants of the once vast East African herds are protected. But now, zebra and other animals compete with Maasai cattle for these remaining grasslands. We are in the Kajiado district of Kenya, Maasai land. Before we start our tagging, we must get clearance from the local chief. The Maasai are noted for their friendliness and you're always assured a warm welcome whenever you pay a visit to one of their villages. Near the village gate, two strange conical mounds attract our attention. Dick explains that the mounds are actually Maasai prayers, supplications to their gods to heal sick cattle. The village, or Manyata, is home for both the Maasai and their most prized possession, their cattle. They've seen us coming and the elders are waiting. Dick outlines our mission. We'll be darting zebra and other animals. 
the chief understands that this project will benefit the cattle of his manata and of all the Maasai tribes. To a Maasai, cattle are wealth, and he accumulates as many as he can. Every morning, the young men of the tribe herd the cattle from the village to graze over the Amboseli till they return in the evening. As veterinary science and a growing Maasai population bring more and more cattle to the Amboseli, ways must be found for them and the wildlife to live together. This is the purpose of Dick's project. We're going to try to tag both zebra and elephant today, and we'd better get going. The chief wishes us luck. Dick's project will ultimately mark hundreds of animals and study their seasonal ranges as a guide in the establishment of future Maasai villages. If we can catch and mark a zebra, it may give the UN team some of the knowledge they need to save this area. Leaving the Maasai village behind, we double back and once more enter the shadow of Kilimanjaro. This is the area where the herd was grazing, and it's time to get ready for action. The dart carries a carefully measured dose of immobilizing drugs. Shooting a running zebra from a moving truck will be difficult. There they are. Not quite close enough. These animals can do 40 miles an hour in open country like this. Good shot. Right in the flank. Now, if we can just keep after him till the drug begins to take effect. It won't be easy. The trouble is, zebras all look alike. We've lost sight of him. If he falls in the bush, we may not find him. The dart is so small that it's hard to see in the animal's flank. That's the one. Nothing to do now but wait. The shot was near perfect, and the zebra has received a full injection of the drug. Now we can safely approach the animal. This is really a great system. It protects the zebra from injury and makes him easier to handle. While Dick and I work on the zebra, Marlin stands watch. This reserve is full of animals, and we don't want any unexpected visitors. Dick has developed this simple but effective marking system. First, a red leather collar goes around the neck. It causes no discomfort, and it's highly visible. The color of the collar indicates the area where the zebra was found. In addition to his collar, he gets a bright yellow tag. The tag gives each animal a name. From now on, this fellow will be K6. The job is finished except for the antidote. It'll work very quickly. The antidote will counteract the effects of the drug. He should be up on his feet in a moment. The zebra gave us quite a chase, but catching and tagging an elephant 
will be considerably more difficult. He's a fine, healthy animal, and he'll be very conspicuous as he grazes the grasslands of Ambicelli. After darting the zebra, we were ready to try for elephant. We were interested in the migration patterns of the big bulls, so we returned to the Maasai village to learn where they might be found. Kilimanjaro forms a stunning backdrop for the Maasai Manyata. They greet us with good news. They've sighted a solitary bull elephant not far from here. The chief seems curious about Dick's capture gun. So, a quick demonstration. His form seems pretty good, but his friend doesn't think so. Okay, let's give him a try. If I were an elephant, I don't think I'd worry too much about this fellow. The large metal ear tag for the elephant also fascinates the chief. The details of our hunt seem to interest the Maasai, but they're not hunters themselves. They lead a simple pastoral life here in this village. Many of their ways may seem strange to someone unfamiliar with them, but somehow kids always seem to be the same wherever you go. The Maasai are a proud people, proud in the ways of the past and proud of their ability to meet the challenge of life in this wilderness, a life that centers on their herds of cattle. Cattle supply the staple of the Maasai diet, but it's not the meat they eat. It's a common sight in the Manyata to see the men preparing to draw blood from their cattle. First, a tourniquet is placed around the neck, causing the juggler vein to swell. Then an arrow with a special shallow point. Now the blood streaming from the puncture is collected in a gourd. The women transform this whole blood into a blood and milk mixture that is the staple of the Maasai diet. The wound is sealed with mud. It will quickly heal. Before the milk is added, the blood is stirred to keep it from coagulating. Blood and milk. This is almost the entire diet of the Maasai. The amount of blood taken from the animal is not enough to weaken it, and it returns to the herd in good condition. These are a fascinating people, but we've got a date with an elephant, and we'd better be on our way. We're headed for the tall elephant grass at the edge of the bush. This is the area of the tall grass. There he is, a tremendous bull. An animal this big calls for a larger dart. It'll take a good dose of drug to put him down. As we follow the bull, I'll keep radio contact with Marlon. His vehicle will have to stay behind until the elephant's down. Two cars would only complicate Dick's job. If he charges, we want plenty of maneuvering room. He's giving us a real careful once over, and Dick must wait for a shot at the rear. Now he's turning, a perfect target. Misfire. The power cartridge did not detonate. We'll have to hurry before the elephant gets out of range. 
He's moving off. Now. Perfect. Right on the mark. In just a short time, the drug should take effect. A quick report to Marlin. He'll follow us as we track the darted elephant. What a giant. With an animal this large, the drug will take a while. All we can do now is to follow and wait. It looks like he's slowing down a little. Marlin can bring his car closer now. It looks like he wants to charge. But he just hasn't got the steam. The drug's working. He's heading for the bush. This could be dangerous. We could easily lose sight of him in the trees and tall grass. He can hardly take a step now. The drug is slowly blocking his muscular control. This should be it. It looks as if he's settling into a sitting position, a dangerous one for an elephant. Unless we can do something quickly, the weight of his great body pushing down on his lungs will restrict his breathing. He could suffocate in a matter of minutes. In only a few minutes, the elephant's inability to breathe freely would begin taking its toll. There was much to be done, and we had to move quickly. We only have a short time before the situation becomes critical for the elephant, according to Dick's estimate. We'll need plenty of help to get the elephant over on its side. But we've got a job to do first. Dick wants to put the identification collar on before we try to roll him over. This is one big elephant. I'd guess his weight at close to seven tons. If he were on his side, we'd have to tunnel under him in order to put the collar on. The upright position makes the job easier, but we'll have to hurry. Only a few more rivets and we'll be finished. Nothing like working in the shade. We don't have much time left. His breathing seems more labored. That does it. Now to get this monster over on his side. With a rope around the front leg on the far side, we may be able to pull it underneath him and roll him over. It's no use, we're not budging him. We'll have to try the truck. If this doesn't work, the elephant will be in serious trouble. We've got to get him over. In a few more minutes, he'll suffocate. He's over. Now he can breathe freely again.
We'll use several marking systems on the elephant. I'll help Dick's assistant put a metal tag in the ear. The ear is tough, and this causes the elephant no pain. We'll also paint a number on his flank. But first, we'll clean the mud and dust from his inch-thick hide with a special fluid. Once the skin is clean, we'll paint on an identification number. The large disc will fit on the front of the elephant's ear. It's padded underneath to protect the ear. Altogether, some 200 animals will be tagged here and in other areas as part of the project. Then Dick's team will study their movements through and around the Ambicelli Reserve. The tag is in and we'd better finish up. The drug may begin to wear off. Now for the finishing touch, a coating of light reflecting crystals. The elephant's marked, and it's time to revive him with the antidote. About the only place you can reach a vein on an elephant is behind the ear. was amazingly fast. And he's making short work of the equipment we left behind. was close. I've never seen one come out of it that quickly. He's a magnificent animal and he will provide valuable information to the United Nations research team. This will help him and all the animals that live beneath Kilimanjaro. No, you can't have that, W.K. I think he's still worried about that elephant, Jim. The work of Dick Denny and the United Nations Range Development Program may find the way for Maasai cattle and wild animals to coexist beneath Kilimanjaro, adapting to each other without ill effect. The pressure of Maasai expansion is typical of the pressures our expanding civilization exerts on wildlife all over the world as the boundaries of the remaining havens slowly shrink. As in the Ambicelli, ways must be found to coexist to prevent a destructive upheaval of a delicate balance that has been poised for millions of years in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com.